Hi, I'm Rick Stuckey. I live in Lincoln Park in Chicago in an 1890s Victorian house. I'm an ISEA solar ambassador. Today I'm going to share my solar story and show you some of the important components of my system. I started my solar adventure in 2012. I wanted to go solar mainly f to reduce my carbon footprint but I also expected to break even on the cost of the installation over about eight years. I met my solar installer on a Sierra Club lobbying trip to Springfield and we got started on the installation process a few months later. The process went very smoothly and took about four months in total. A good deal of that time was spent getting approval from the city of Chicago. I have a flat roof so the panels have to be held in place by large concrete blocks to avoid having to puncture the roof which might cause leaks. For flat roofs the city has to do an inspection and determine if the roof is strong enough to take the extra weight. They informed me that a previous installation of a skylight had been done improperly and that a knee wall was needed to be installed to strengthen the roof. Not a big deal. If you have a sloping roof there's far less trouble there. The other big delay was due to the difficulty of finding anyone in Commonwealth Edison who could authorize a net metering arrangement. That wouldn't be a problem today but it was in 2012 when solar roofs in Chicago were relatively rare. Because I have a small house I could only get 12 panels on the roof and in 2012 each panel could only produce 240 watts of electricity so the theoretical output of my system is 2.88 kilowatts. A modern system would generate about twice that output and cost a lot less. Most of my house is powered by electricity so my system does not take care of my full load most of the time. But I do export el excess electricity to the grid in good months. When I need more power than my system can produce, I get it from Commonwealth Edison. But I have recently signed up to get my extra power from a community solar supplier, Clearway, who I hope will come online this summer. Now let's take a look at my system. Here are the panels. They're installed on racks pointing south. As you can see, there are some large trees on the west side and one large tree on the south side. The south side tree has grown a lot taller uh, now than it was when I first installed the system and it does shade the panels to some extent. There are also a couple of chimneys on the south side that don't help. You can see the concrete blocks that hold down the racks. Underneath each panel there are micro inverters. These serve two purposes. They convert the DC current that the panels generate to AC. AC current that is synchronized with the grid. They also keep track of the energy each cell is generating and report that to a gadget in the basement that transfers the information to the cloud where my history is collected and any anomalies in the system are detected and reported to the solar installer. I can pull down lots of real-time and historical information from the cloud. A more, a more modern system might only have one inverter for the whole system and small devices on each panel to record the output. The electricity is transferred down a conduit to a breaker outside the building which can be used to isolate the system if necessary. Then the power is fed into my electrical panel in the basement. One of the biggest challenges we faced was making enough slots in my panel for all the extra breakers that the system needs. At the time it wasn't too hard, but since then I've swapped out a gas furnace for a heat pump and added an electrical range that uses a lot of power when the ovens are in self-clean mode. You can see that there are now a lot of cheetah breakers which are used to double up on the breakers to make space. It's a common problem in old houses. The whole system cost me about $24,000 initially. I got an immediate federal credit for about a third of that and state credits too for about another third. So my net cost was about $8,000. Since then I have received payments for renewable energy credits every six months for about $100 each and a credit on my bill from the net metering process. 
If you're thinking of putting a solar system in now, you should be aware that the state incentives have changed. You now get about 15 years worth of the REC payments up front as an incentive. And the federal uh, incentives are tax credits, but the percentage you can get is declining rapidly and will disappear completely uh, by 2022, so better hurry up. That's the end of my tour. I hope I've answered your questions on what a solar system looks like and encourage you to go forward with one if you have a suitable building. If not, now is the time to look into community solar. It's a very good deal and does not require you to put any equipment in your house. If you still have questions, please check into the Illinois Solar Education website at www.illinoisolar.org. Thank you. Goodbye. Good luck.